doesn't it seem that every day we experience so many different problems and disappointments in our life? People let us down, situations don't always work out the way we want them to. It can feel like we're constantly fighting to try and make things right. And we have no idea what the next day or moment is going to bring. Why is it that sometimes the smallest issue has the power to completely ruin our mood for the entire day? In this lesson, we're going to explore some of these ideas. Where do our emotions come from? What happens when we feel happy or sad? And how can we learn to manage our emotions? Let's take a look at this image. Can you think of words that you would use to describe this emotion? Some words that I can think of are angry, stressed, annoyed, maybe all of the above. Now let's take a look at this image. I would call this happy, delighted or satisfied. Now, when we look at the wisdom of the Guru, it shows us that we can group all the emotions such as distress, suffering and pain into one category. The wisdom calls this Dukh. And all the feelings of pleasure, joy and satisfaction can be grouped together and the wisdom calls this Sukh. So why is it that we experience these two very different emotional states throughout our day? Well, in the last lesson, we looked at time and being fulfilled in the present moment. So let's explore that idea a little further. Imagine this is you at any given moment throughout your day. Without realizing it, we're always creating small expectations that things are going to go exactly as we want them to. It could be the weather, the traffic, that things are always running on time, people are always kind and acting in a way that we want them to. But in reality, circumstances are always changing in unexpected ways. And as events change, we react to them and our emotions either go up or down. We often call this the emotional roller coaster. Why is it that emotions change with events? When an unexpected event happens, our mind begins to interpret and add labels to it. We can call this the mental story. The mind uses words such as good or bad, amazing or terrible, like or dislike. When the mind repeats these words a few times, then it becomes an emotion. And this occurs thousands of times throughout our day. An event happens, there's a mental story which leads to an emotion of us feeling happy or upset. And we tend to believe this mental story. That is our mind's interpretation of the event. If our mind tells us that something is terrible, then we feel sad, angry, upset. If our mind tells us that it's great, then we feel joy, happy, delight. And we swing between these two emotions all day. We also like to think that our emotions are going to last. It's like throwing a ball up in the air and expecting it to stay up. But the reality is, when our emotions go up, there's only one place for it to go, and that's down. And this is beginning to sound like the pain-pleasure cycle that we've seen before. Now, we may not like to admit or acknowledge it, but we seem to be enjoying the ride. Have you ever noticed that when we're frustrated, we often don't want to stop ourselves? We sometimes like being angry. We feel right telling others how wrong they are. It makes us feel better than them. When we blame others, we can feel superior. And when we shout, it can make us feel powerful. Even when we're upset, we get support and comfort from others. So it seems that our emotions, whether they're happiness, anger or sadness, are actually quite rewarding. Because they're rewarding, 
we continue getting back on the roller coaster every day. Now let's take a look at the teachings from the Guru Granth Sahib again. Everyone asks for happiness. No one asks for sadness. But happiness is always followed by sadness. And those who follow the mind cannot understand. Because of this cycle of swinging from happy to sad, the wisdom teaches us that this is not what we all really want in life. It also shows us that happy or sad are not the only two options. There is a third alternative, and we can call this emotional stability, tranquility, or peace. The wisdom calls this anand or sehej. And in the next line, the Guru teaches us, treat happiness and sadness as the same. For those who are pierced by this wisdom, real happiness is achieved. So how can we do this? Let's look again at how our emotions are formed. First, there is an event, followed by a mental story, and then the emotion. I like to think of the mind as a whirlpool of words, thoughts, and labels. Now, as much as we'd like to, we can't always change the events. But what if we could change the thoughts, words, and labels in our head, the mental story? We can do this by practicing words of acceptance throughout our day. We can call these the Guru's Shabad, or wisdom words that we repeat in our mind. And when we do this, we begin to reprogram our mental story, how the mind interprets the events in our lives. Acceptance doesn't mean that we don't act when things need to be done. It means that we act from a place of peace. When I explain this to my children, I tell them that it's like learning how to swim before you fall into deep waters. And we practice in the shallow end of the pool. When small events happen in our life, we can take any wisdom word, mantra or phrase to reframe how we see that event. I like to use the phrase, I don't mind what happens. And I practice this throughout my day whenever small things happen, like bad weather, being stuck in traffic, getting pressure from work, I practice using the mantra, I don't mind what happens throughout my day, and it allows me to be content with the reality that's happening all around me. And when we start doing this with some of the small problems in life, it can really help us deal with the bigger challenges and larger waves that we're going to face. With more practice, we learn to interrupt the negative thoughts in our mind. And you will find that if you transform your story, you can transform your life. So I want you to practice every day using a different phrase or wisdom word that reminds you to accept the events that are happening all around you and to keep your mind at peace. Here are some questions for you to reflect on and discuss. Can you think of a time when you've enjoyed feeling upset or angry? What mental stories do you repeat regularly that cause you to suffer? What ways have you found useful to avoid going on the emotional roller coaster? Which wisdom words or mantras do you find helpful to bring you peace? Whenever you feel like getting back on that emotional roller coaster, you need to decide whether feeling peaceful may be more rewarding or helpful to you. Remember that pleasure and pain are not your only two options. Whatever happens, you can always choose peace. <laughs>